report. Hello everybody and welcome back to the poor man's chemist. In this video we are going to be turning ammonium perchlorate into barium perchlorate. Um, I was just wanting to do this so that I could make some pure perchloric acid um, by metathesis reaction between barium perchlorate and um, sulfuric acid. Um, just so that I could take another shot at dissolving that iridium in that mix of perchloric and nitric acids. Um, so I don't really need a lot of it. Honestly, that is the only thing I have ever used perchloric acid for in 27 years of doing chemistry. But, um... I mean, clearly it did not work very well last time. The potassium um, perchlorate was just not soluble enough, I don't think. So, barium perchlorate is going to be, you know, using that to make pure perchloric acid. Well, I don't have to worry about solubility there. So, this is going to be very similar to the barium chlorate from potassium chlorate prep. In fact, we're just we're going to use the exact same process and we're just kind of picking it up halfway through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dissolve this in about 100 mils of warm water. I'm going to dissolve, more or less, the barium hydroxide octahydrate here. Um, there is a slight excess of barium hydroxide octahydrate because we need it, we're going to remove it in the next step after this, after we react these two things together anyway. So, you know, a slight excess is, it is just going to ensure that all of our ammonium perchlorate reacts, so I don't have to do this prep again anytime soon. So, anyway, I will come back once this is all dissolved and we are ready to get things started. Okay, well, everything hasn't dissolved yet. When, when I look back at the um, barium chlorate prep again, um, the original prep that that is taken from actually says to react um, the ammonium salt and the barium salt while they're still kind of, I guess, um, in a minimal amount of water. So, I don't know. We're, we're going to give this a try. I mean, what's the worst that can happen, right? It won't work, and I'll have to try again. Although, I think it's going to work. What I'm more worried about is it foaming. Since it's going to produce a lot of ammonia. But I guess we'll see. Okay, so the ammonium perchlorate and the barium hydroxide octahydrate are mixed together. Now it's just a question of stirring and warming up the solution until everything reacts. Alright everyone, so our reaction is underway and to prove it to you, I have some pH paper that I have wet with water and we are just going to not immerse it in the solution, just hold it over it so the vapors hit it and, oh, well, there you can see it. That shit is very alkaline. So we have a whole lot of ammonia gas being produced right now. Um, our, we will know our reaction is done when this doesn't happen anymore. So I will come back when this is no longer a thing. Okay, everybody, so it is the next day. Um, I heated and stirred this stuff for hours. Um, I had to heat it and stir it some more this morning. That took a long time, but um, there's finally not even the slightest hint of ammonia coming off of this anymore. Um, I, I mean, I literally stuck my nose to the edge of the beaker and, and gave it a good whiff um, because I'm crazy. Don't do that. Um, I, mean, I mean, I had checked it 
already to make sure that I couldn't smell anything, and no, there's not even the slightest hint. So, um, even though the protocol for the synthesizing the barium chlorate says to evaporate it down and then reconstitute it, we're not going to bother with that. I mean, the reaction is done. There's, there's nothing else that it can be. Um, all of this white stuff is, well, it probably started out as undissolved, um, barium hydroxide, but because barium hydroxide, I'm sorry for the wind, y'all, it's just, that's winter down here, man, it's cold as shit at night, and the days are pretty temperate, but we get a lot of wind, um, so anyway, barium hydroxide, um, reacts pretty readily with CO2 in the air, and because this has been heating and stirring out in the open for hours and hours, um, I would imagine that Pretty much what we're looking, well, all of what we're looking at here is barium carbonate at this point. So now the thing is to separate this from the barium carbonate. I'm sure you could filter it, and I've had a lot of people make suggestions um, when I centrifuge stuff to get rid of these really fine particulates, and they're great suggestions. Um, I mean, you know, to get the stuff I need to do, like diatomaceous earth, I think I've heard, or sea light, or whatever, um, and use that so you can get out little particles like this, and so it won't clog your vacuum filters. That is a great suggestion. I need to get some of that stuff. I also need to get a new vacuum filter, uh, fritted glass filter, since the one that I have um, is kind of contaminated with metal sulfide that precipitated out on it. Long story. I've tried several things trying to get it to dissolve to get out of there, and nothing I try works. So I need to get another one of those, too. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, man, the, the shit you the, you need to buy to keep a lab like this going is, is endless. Um, uh, it would not be possible without y'all. I, I Y'all have done so much to, to help me out here, man, so that I can keep bringing y'all cool shit. And um, you guys thank me all the time. So, you know, I, I hope you know I really do appreciate it, y'all. Anyway, enough of bullshit. Let's get on with it. I'm going to centrifuge it, <clears throat> and then um, I will come back when we're ready. To, the, the next step will be to bubble carbon dioxide through it and get rid of all of the excess um, barium carbonate or hydroxide that's left. There shouldn't be a whole lot at this point. But we're going to do it anyway because we're shooting to get a as pure a product as possible. So, I'll come back when this is all nice and pretty and clear and we're ready to move on. Okay, so when I looked at the solution um, after I stopped filming, after that last segment, um, I, I decided that it didn't actually need to be centrifuged. Uh, most of the particulates, I thought they were, look, they looked like they were going to be really small, but they're actually pretty big. Um, so I just filtered the solution like normal. Um, I've got a carbon dioxide generator set up here, so what I'm going to do now is bubble carbon dioxide through the solution in order to precipitate out any excess barium hydroxide. Um, the reason this doesn't precipitate out barium chlorate or barium perchlorate is because when carbon dioxide dissolves in water, it forms carbonic acid, which is a weak acid. The formation um, for it to form carbonate and precipitate out... Um, the barium perchlorate or barium chlorate, it would have to form chloric or perchloric acid, which would just turn right around and react with the barium carbonate and form our product again. Um, although that reaction probably just does not happen. Um, generally, chemical reactions proceed in such a way that um, the strength of an acid or a base is reduced. So, I mean, having a weak acid like carbonic acid um, produce chloric or perchloric acid which are strong acids is not going to be a thing so what we're going to do now is just like I said just bubble the gas through it once that's done um, I will come back since I have no idea how long it's going to take it usually doesn't take too terribly long and um then we will filter all of that off and we'll be ready to evaporate it down and get our product. Okay, we've got a pH of 6. You can see there where the forceps are the first test. 
and showed a pH of like 11, but the second test on the other end is a pH of 6. So that's exactly what it's supposed to be, and you can see that we had quite a bit of excess barium hydroxide. Um, this, being such a fine particulate, probably is going to be easier to centrifuge than filter. Um, yeah, yeah. I guess I really should invest in some of that stuff. I could just vacuum filter this. It'd be all nice and easy. God, that would be nice. Anyway, um, I'm going to have to invest in a second stir plate first, though, because my um, carbon dioxide generator had a little boil over. I managed to rescue the experiment and <laughs> unhook it all and just in time before it boiled over. Um... But yeah, yeah, it boiled over so that 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 cheap ass like twenty nine dollars stir or so was it twenty five twenty nine dollars whatever um just got a bath in acidic salt water, so yeah, I'm thinking that it's it's days maybe done. <laughs> Anywho, oh well, fallen soldier, we will continue on. So yeah, I'm going to clean all this up, and then we will evaporate it down, and we will have our product, theoretically. Okay, everybody, it's the next day, and here is our final product. Let's get it out here. Maybe I should have done that in advance. Oh well. And there we go. Barium perchlorate. It has a bit of a bluish tinge to it that developed as I was evaporating it down. I'm not really sure if that's good, bad, or otherwise. Um, I don't really know what's up with that. I mean, this is an evaporating dish that had never been used before. And I cleaned it up pretty good before I put it in there. So... I'm not really sure. But anyway, um, I mean, and I, I'm very confident about the identity of the product just because, I mean, there's, there's nothing else it can be. Um, as after I got done centrifuging it and I was evaporating it down, um, a whole bunch more barium carbonate precipitated out. And actually, it developed some really beautiful hexagonal crystals of, um, barium carbonate on the surface of the liquid, which unfortunately my dumbass didn't get a picture of. Um, but I, so I had to filter that out again, um, and that was easy. I just filtered that through a cotton plug. And then continued on the evaporation over boiling water, and there we go. So, if you liked that video, give it a thumbs up, and if you didn't, well, mm -hmm. I don't care. Um, subscribe, comment, share the video, donate a few bucks, and until the next one, y'all, I'll see you later. That's pretty goddamn cool, man. Now we can make some perchloric acid. Dissolve that iridium.